Welcome into apparently the mobile edition of the 615 Sessions podcast, not from the DraftKings Sportsbook Studios. Teron Davenport of ESPN, Joe Rexroad of The Athletic and 1025. Welcome back, boys. Appreciate you having me on, man. A little little daddy uh, daddy duty here. Just pick my, my rascal up from uh, from school. But, hey, man, when duty calls, you, you got you to gotta answer. Listen, Devin, I'm sure, could drop some knowledge about everything going on in the world that we have no idea about. Devin, I'm sure, I'm sure that you're you're gonna be as good a podcast guest as your dad always is. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> that was a test. All right, we'll keep it moving. Rex where the Rome, heck are thanks. you going, Buck? Like, I want to know where you're going. No, okay. Well, now I sound like a snob because I I have people that come clean my house every Friday and they're currently cleaning my house. So I had to retreat to the car um, to do the podcast. So that's why it sounds the way that it does. I got cats, Rex Road. The house needs to be cleaned. I'm only one man. We got things to talk about. Uh, the, the gardener's got to do his thing. And yeah, you got all your people. I get it. Chef, Chef Antoine will be there later to prepare the seasoned vegetables and salmon. <laughs> no it's not it's not salmon season we got we got a little we got a little veal chop later but i'll we'll get to that on the food pod <laughs> and, uh, okay. I, wish, I wish that that was the direction that we were going anyway uh titans need to clean house speaking of cleaning up messes the texans are disgusting <laughs> rex road i've been in toronto we're talking about this before we started rolling i don't know what possible way other than complete and utter collapse that the titans could lose this game yeah, it would be a shocker for them to lose. I'll be honest, I'm not going to be blown away if it's a competitive game well into like the second half. Um, I do think the Texans, you know, if you look at if their season, there is a big difference between the Texans with Tyrod Taylor at quarterback and, and without him. So you got to keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think even for all the, the things missing right now in the Titans offense, and the uncertainty and sort of the, the, the situation they're in right now post Derrick Henry, I still think that they should dominate that defense. And that's where ultimately um, I think that they, you know, should, should pull away eventually. Uh, TD, I'm looking at, I'm looking at AJ and, you know, we'll talk about the, the stuff outside of football that he's obviously been dealing with or, or been talking about the last couple of weeks. But the way that defenses are playing him, it's clear and obvious that they recognize he's the greatest threat. Let's try and take it away. I think people are getting too caught up in the drops. The drops are, are a, a consistency issue that needs to be corrected. But right. I don't think there's any question, especially in this last game, that he has been clearly and obviously targeted by opposing defensive coordinators. Well, yeah, and that's what you're seeing now. You didn't have Marshawn Lattimore travel with him, but that doesn't mean he wasn't getting attention. You did have, you know, some help over time, a little bit of our bracket coverage, and it ended up opening up a one-on-one matchups for Marcus Johnson. And, and, and Marcus spoke about that on Friday when uh, he was asked, and he took advantage of it, right? Six targets, five receptions, 100 yards. And uh, that's something where I think it's, it's just a, a sign of respect for A.J. Brown. But it's also where you could kind of feel his impact without seeing it statistically. And that's exactly what happened there. And that's not to take anything away from Marcus Johnson because, you know, he did show the speed on half of that 100 yards that he had catching that ball and pulling away from the defense. Yeah, and he's been a factor in the return game as well. I mean, you guys yeah. have obviously been at AJ's press conference on Thursday with, with the social media post dealing with, with mental health and things like that. Vrabel, I thought, was great today talking about the relationship that they have. I mean, Teron, you've been around enough coaches both as a player and as a media member, but that seems to be something that that Mike really excels at, even as his methods may be that of a crazy person, the way that he does it. Yeah, and that's exactly why I asked the question, because it is pretty unique. I mean, I, you know, probably the closest to it that I've seen was, was John Harbaugh. And uh, I know, you know, most of those guys will run through a wall for him. But it's just when you're, what you're seeing from Coach Rabel and just hearing A.J. Brown, you know, open up about how, you know, he's family and a friend for life. 
I think that just, it goes to show that there is importance in, in making those emotional deposits. And he even does it with, with us, you know, like he met Devin before and there have been times where he asked me, you know, how Devin was doing, it, you know, um, I, I think that just shows that even though there's so much macho and, and, and you know, um, all of that with him, you know, there's still a person in there that, that really does care about connecting with people. And that's what you're seeing. And there's, it even goes further to why he's able to have such an effective message for them each and every week and, and how he's able to pull that and get them to buy in. Those are all factors for him. And I think they do a great job just as an organization, just making sure that the culture is correct. And that's a good example of just the, the relationships that they develop coach to player. I'm sure you feel those warm and fuzzies from Vrabel all the time, Rex Road. <laughs> well, I mean, it, honestly, I, I mean, I agree, you know, with everything TD said. And, you know, the, the interesting thing about Vrabel is I think one thing he said today that was that stood out to me is, you know, he, he, he was honest about, look, I mean, it's, this isn't the same with every guy. I mean, this is a two-way yeah. street. Like, AJ sought him out, right? But what that does is it makes it genuine. I mean, you you can't pretend to be everybody's best friend. You are cutting guys all the time, bringing them back, benching, whatever. I mean, you know, it, like it's a tough business. You got to know what the playing field is. But someone comes to Vrabel and he actually is a human, you know, about it. And I mean, I, I think that it's it's been obvious uh, before all this. You know, there, there's a there's a human in there, and it does. I'm not saying like way in there, but I'm just saying, <laughs> trying to get me in trouble here, Buck. Hey, no, but I mean, you know, man, <laughs> you know he listens and and reads, and he's he he's he's scrolling our Twitter timelines, Rex. You start talking yeah. smack, we're gonna end up on a video board in his office somewhere. So way deep inside that monster, there's a human, guys. No, um, yeah, you know, you know the, it, I think it's uh, I think it it helps you understand one how he can coach away does because he does coach hard and he doesn't spare any you know i mean it, there's i mean he's going to be very frank with anybody out there as he's yeah. in, in control of a practice but i mean I, i'll go back a couple years and one time kenny vaccaro back in the good old days when we had open locker room he just <laughs> talked to guys about stuff you know talking about, talking about you know like a personal thing he had and variable you know, it was like a kind of a key time but Vrabel's like, yeah, man, you got to take care of your stuff. I don't think every coach does that. And I think Vrabel, right. that's where Vrabel gets it for, as a recent player. Like, you have to, like, take into account what's most important in life. And I think he always actually has that balance in mind, um, even if he comes off at times like the most macho football coach ever. Well, I mean, and that's something that Lawan's talked about all the time. In fact, he's pretty openly resentful about Mike Malarkey and his staff about, you know, not just, I think, being stripped of the captaincy at, at an earlier point in his career, but based on how they kind of responded and reacted as an old school football coaching staff with Russ Grimm and Terry Robisky and Dick LeBeau, like it's a totally different world of coaching that those guys ex existed in. And, and Mike has really seemed to rally guys around the fact that if you're going to reach out to him, he's not like, like, like he said, and like you guys have articulated. It's just not something that's going to be possible among this many dudes, especially when they're rolling through the most players on a game day roster yeah. that rest for this team uh, across, across the past 10 weeks. So, um, you know, it's, it seems like the buy-in is there in a way that it wasn't last year. And just like all of us have done things differently with creating relationships and talking to people outside of the, conventions of locker room stuff like you got to find ways to do it differently and it seems like mike has done a good job with that yeah and i think uh, the thing that really makes it such a good job and makes it easy for them to buy in is the effectiveness of his messages and, and it just seems like each player that you ask about the mess like they always say hey i believe it because it's stuff that i've seen work and come actually impact the game yeah. right that's what Tannehill said on Thursday you, you know or what I don't know these days run together man when Tannehill spoke that's when he said you know I've seen this stuff time and time again be something that 
you know, comes up and, and has a lot to do with the outcome of the game. So he's spot on with it, and, and that just makes it easier when you see it actually work. Rex, uh, to, to the point about Tannehill, I mean, this is an opportunity for him to show us. And I think he's been fine. Like, I think the criticisms of the turnover specifically are, are people box score scouting what this dude is actually doing out here. But I don't think there's any reason why he shouldn't be able to perform closer to what we've seen in recent memory in the absence of a legitimate running game without Derek. Because that's been – I mean, that's fallen off a cliff. Well, he's got to be protected. I mean, and that's where – I mean, look, I, I think that I think he's had a few throws this year. I think he's had more throws this year where you're like, whoa, what are you doing? Than he's had um, in the in the past two seasons. But he's also been under more duress by far. Yeah. I mean, I don't like I, you look the protection this year, especially compared to last year. They, they held it together. They they max protected more and all that stuff when Luan got hurt. But before Luan got hurt last year. I mean, they had everything working. They had the protection. They had Derrick Henry going. They had Jonu Smith and Corey Davis play. I mean, uh, playing every week with AJ. I mean, that offense is still the best offense we've seen, um, you know, in this in this brief era. And to me, that's just the number one thing: is can can they get some consistency on that offensive line? And one, you know, scratch out more of a running game. They should be able to do that moving forward. But then. Just give him protection. I think, I think he'll be fine. Then you have to. Then you go to beyond AJ. You know who's going to be consistent, and make plays. But I mean, I even think. I mean, I do think Marcus Johnson could be a, a, a cons, you know a more consistent presence. You know, Rogers, Westbrook, Keenum. I mean, those guys um, can can make plays for you too. If he gets a if he gets protection, uh, then I think he can absolutely do the job and win most of these games down the stretch. Rex, wasn't it you that looked at me in the press box and said, why is Adrian Peterson running that way? Wasn't that you? Running that, uh, remind, I may have been what, on what instance I'm, I'm, I'm just him that. not, not being as effective, being more hesitant than we're accustomed to seeing Adrian Peterson be, and it's the fact that he's a 36-year-old man out there running away from giant fire-breathing dragons like Marcus <laughs> Davenport and Cam Jordan on a regular basis. Like, I don't know. I mean, Foreman got more carries this time around and seems to be slightly more efficient. But, I mean, TD, we've seen so many years, 14 years of Adrian Peterson, and I think that what he does is, is best amplified with more carries. But I don't think that you yeah. can do that with him right now. Yeah, and that's that's what I asked him about today. You know, um, about the the committee approach and how you know, volume carries work for a guy like him. And he kind of played it off like as if all running backs need that. But uh, no, like he's the guy. So you look at a lot of his run. You know, he sets stuff up, and you'll see him see a hole like a cutback. And at a younger age, he would see that lane in his body, you know, he, his brain would tell his body to cut back and, and hit that, and it would all happen. But as you get older, your reaction and, and those type of things, it, it changes, and that's what we're seeing now. So he's not as quick to be able to marry that footwork and that speed to, to change of direction with the eyes. And that's, that's kind of been an issue for him. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, the, the first couple of weeks, he was a bit amped up, he said, and that, that kind of made him like hit holes a little bit too soon or, or, or maybe not even see them. So those are all things that he has to continue to work on and just get used to. But I, I mean, the bottom line is Foreman is the more effective runner right now, uh, especially if they're going to work through these roles that they're, they're carrying out. So, that's the guy that should get the carries uh, the most of them. I think we'll see that bear itself out. And I mean, you know, outside of that, like with this game, the Colts are playing the Bills this week and the Patriots have uh, a hell of a run the next month, basically. And of course, that's the Titans' next opponent. Rex, if I'm looking at this, what, what do you value more at this point? The Top spot in the AFC. If the Bills were to lose, that helps your cause. But if the Colts lose to Buffalo, you have a better chance. You have an easier path to winning the division. What what should Titans fans be looking for as far as that's concerned this weekend? Well, they should be like me and have already considered the AFC South race over, and then you just focus on the one seed. That's what I'm uh, saying. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it's not over. 
But like, if you're asking me what rooting interest should be, Indy Bills, I I think Titans fans should be rooting for the Colts because yeah. it's it's you go through the two schedules, the Titans and the and the Colts schedules. It's it's hard for me to buy that they can make this up down three having been swept. So I mean, the one the buy for this team in this situation was is you're hoping Derrick Henry comes back. I mean, talk about worthwhile. It's always worthwhile. And of course now in this league, there's only one team that gets it. I mean, to me, that's the, the problem. The thing that's problematic there potentially is for a team that's been so banged up, if it was just about winning the division and you weren't really in that race, then you could have like two or three, like chill weeks before the playoffs, you know, right. but I have a feeling this team's going to be having to go full throttle all the way. Yeah for that but you know what if you can get that well worth it yeah no that that's that's basically the outlook at this point and uh and it'll be interesting to see what happens on sunday boys i appreciate the time as always and i will see you in the press box on sunday yeah for sure man this has been a great addition of traveling with td i appreciate <laughs> you having me on <laughs> Devin, we'll, we'll work on some better lines for you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya.